Welcome back to the show. Jeff DeForest, Mike Luby Lubitz here, the Defoe Show on South Florida Live. And uh, this is great because, uh, and Luby uh, has experienced this with me over the years that we've been working together. And uh, going back in time, uh, you know, it probably was even more exaggerated where uh, th- this city, in terms of sports coverage, this area, South Florida, was very University of Miami centric. And the people at Florida Atlantic and Florida International, they, they started football programs that now. FAU had the advantage of having uh, the great Howard Schnellenberger as uh, their uh, face uh, of the football program at its uh, inception. And when he would come on the air and say, oh, within seven years, we're going to win a national championship. We all thought, "Okay, that's great, Howard. But it's unlikely to happen that FAU is going to achieve this this level of height in terms of the sporting landscape. And yet here we are with the Sweet 16 coming up. And uh, we got wind of this uh, when uh, they had put on uh, just an amazing 20-plus game winning streak during the regular season. And we're thinking, who's the coach at FAU? Dusty May. Wow. Got to get this guy on the show. And he's gracious enough now to join us again after uh, making school history. And uh, again, a series of just firsts for this uh, FAU basketball team. We welcome to the show the head coach of the Florida Atlantic Owls, Head of the Sweet 16, Dusty May. Dusty, how are you? Thanks for uh, joining us again. I'm doing great. I appreciate you having me on. Well, it's uh, you know great having you on. I, I was uh, surprised. I mean, I'm figuring uh, you're inundated uh, with people uh, that are requesting conversations with you and, and reaction and uh, even forecasting what's going to happen in the Sweet 16. Uh, let, let's back up and take a little bit of the ride and uh, – if you can, uh, you know, capsulize uh, the regular season. And you now have won 33 games in total, uh, including the uh, conference tournament, and uh, found yourself in the NCAA tournament as a, a number nine seed. Um, h- how does this compare with, with uh, what your anticipation for what the season was uh, when you got this ball rolling? Well, we had high hopes uh, for the season. We had, we won 19 games last year, had everyone back, added uh, Nick Boyd, who had set out last year with an injury. And then we felt like our guys had a really good summer and off season and were much improved. And, and especially some of the guys that, that last year was the first time they had uh, they experienced being in a regular rotation. So there were a lot of factors that gave us hope going into the season. Um, and, but we, we felt like we, we scheduled a really good mid-major schedule we had two uh, money games and then uh, played a lot of, of good programs. Bryant from up this way, which was picked to win the league. South Alabama was picked to win the Sun Belt by some polls. And, and so we felt like we were going to be challenged. So obviously the number of wins. And then our league had the best year in, in, since Memphis was in the league uh, with Derrick Rose, the top 10 league in Ken Palm. So there were a lot of factors that, that gave us uh, some concern about winning this number of games. But we knew we were much better than we had been. And like I said, we won 19 games last year. Well, and uh, you come into the NCAA tournament, a number nine seed. You draw Memphis uh, in the opening round of the tournament. Uh, we, we have a very astute college basketball follower who uh, does, uh, you know, uh, does invest his own uh, finances in, in his opinion. And uh, he was of the opinion, and I don't know if this was common, but and what you thought about it, that Memphis was just so athletic that uh, this was going to be a very tall assignment for FAU, regardless of the fine season you had. Uh, what, what were your thoughts about uh, the Memphis matchup uh, when it was made? And, and how did you go about dealing with the fact that uh, obviously they were, you know, a high-flying athletic team uh, under Penny Hardaway? Well, I've watched several American Conference games because we're joining the league next, next year. So I was familiar with them, but I, I wasn't that familiar where I, I knew their personnel. I knew their two best players and a couple of their role guys. Um, but w- when the draw came out, the more I dove into Memphis, the more I thought they were drastically underseeded. I felt like they were probably, you know, down the stretch last month of the season were one of the best teams in the country. They had just blown out Tulane, beat Houston soundly in the championship game. So they were playing really well down the stretch. They were top 20 Ken Palm. So I felt like they were a top five seed. So it, 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 in, in my opinion, I was, I was concerned, obviously, but um, I also felt like we were underseeded as well. So we've talked uh, with you. We've watched a lot of the coaches and coaches usually – don't hide their emotions. They're very, they wear it on their sleeve. You see, and we love Stan Van Gundy. We've talked to him many a time. He's a guy just like his brother who on the sidelines, they're up, they're down, they're everywhere. You're the opposite of that. It's you're, it's you're, it's rare to see a coach like you, no matter, I could not tell what your team's doing looking at you. They'll pan to coach Dusty May. And it's like, are they winning by 20? Like, I don't even know what's going on in the game. The dude never goes up or down. How do you say that even keel, no matter what's going on in the game? 
years of, of preparing myself to be that way. By nature, <laughs> 180 degrees different than how I am. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. And, and, just, and, and during COVID, I really tried to dive into being a better teacher and educator. Mm. Uh, and so I, I, doing a self-evaluation, I realized what I was doing wasn't helping our guys learn it might make me feel better and it might make me feel more involved, but I don't think they were learning because when they're in the heat of the battle, we can't make all the decisions. I laughed and said my first year, I was joystick in every possession and I didn't like coaching like that. And I don't think the players like playing like that as much. So, um, you know, and, and I grew up, I really uh, admired Tony Bennett. I really did enjoyed watching Brad Stevens coach. So I think as, as a young guy growing up and I was an assistant for a long time, you have a lot of time to really, um, think about how you want to do things and how you want to be, how you want to act. So uh, years and years of practice, but the main thing is I, I don't ever want to distract from our players. And I feel like if I have bad body language or if I'm being too emotional, it, it doesn't help them play better. The uh, school has made one previous NCAA tournament appearance. Uh, you're standing in front of your players as they're about to take the court. We all know, and we've seen it, where, where top teams uh, you know, are, are, are jittery in the first game especially, and don't necessarily have their best stuff. We saw the Hurricanes shooting nothing but bricks in their opener against Drake and uh, you know, putting themselves in a very vulnerable position. Uh, what, what, what do you say to your players uh, you know, to, to keep them uh, with that same demeanor that, that you displayed on the sidelines there, which, by the way, was in stark contrast to your opponent uh, in the coaching box in the second game, uh, Tobin Anderson, who is uh, as animated as anybody we've seen <laughs> since Raleigh Massimino, this guy. <laughs> well, we all just kind of have to be who we are or who, you know, what's best for our players. So they press and they run so that the, his energy and his enthusiasm, I'm sure, uh, gets them going and, and keeps them on edge. So it's obviously worked. They've got a great team. I was really impressed with their guard play and, and them overall. But um, as far as the jitters, I, I think it happened to us in the first game. But we, we, our mantra all year is we've been pretty sound on both sides of the basketball. And, and we've talked about when we defend at a high level and we rebound the basketball despite being extremely small, I think we're 330th in, in team height uh, in the country, then it, it alleviates the pressure on our offense. And, and we have great spurt ability. So if we feel like we just hang around, hang around, we always have a nice run or a big spurt in us. So I think that just gives our guys a lot of confidence. So I know coaches, one game at a time, new season, we're one and oh, we're zero and zero. I totally understand that. And you look at the brackets and you're focused on Memphis. Sh sure. Um, but when it looked like it was going to be Purdue, then it became fairly Dickinson. What changes for you from a mentality standpoint? What changed from you from a preparation standpoint? Because you go from being probably a heavy underdog to a team that may be the favorite. Yeah, it was strange with Columbus turning into a, a, a road game. Uh, the, all the fans there, the Marquette, the Michigan State fans, they were all cheering for FDU. The, the crowd yeah. was chanting FDU, and they made a run in the second half. So I do think it was a little bit odd for our guys. But they, they've been, uh, you know, it, this year it's, it's been uncharted waters. There. Everywhere we've been has been some type of promo, a blue out, a red out, uh, some promotion because we, we, when we got ranked it became a, a big deal in our league. So our guys have, have they're familiar with being in that villain role. It was just odd to go from an underdog who had never been there, never won a postseason game period, to be in in, in, in that situation. So uh, our guys, oh, they're they're unflappable. They just they play, they compete, and and they're really unfazed whether the crowd's forced or against us. It's it's pretty remarkable how how steady they are. Sometimes uh, I cover a lot of boxing in my lifetime. Uh, you can see a turning point. Uh, in a fight where, where uh, you know, one blow is struck and, uh, and now you know that, uh, you know, one, one of the fighters has assumed control. At what point did you feel you, you had control uh, of that Fairleigh Dickinson game? When the buzzer sounded. <laughs> 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 they, they were some scrambling, uh, you know, uh, players out, out there. I mean, they, they really did hustle that team. It was unbelievable. Uh, they did, and, and, and they had some guys that shot 20-plus 20 per, 20 percent from three during the season, just find the rhythm and groove late in the yeah. year. Part of it was matchups. You know, we have seven ED, seven four for Purdue. We got a 7-1 center. So in our mind, we have, you know, we knew it was going to be a matchup problem, but we just felt like we had to have 
uh, gold and the punish them at the other end. So, you know, it's all those decisions. And then who do you put them on? Because they're all small and quick and athletic. And, and when they're all making shots, they're difficult. But we got up double digits, and then they, they banged in two threes in the last minute. We missed uh, both ends of a, of a two-shot foul. Yeah. So, there, you know, we made it a, a lot more interesting than it needed to be. Uh, but credit those guys. They, they had no quit in them. All right. How, how sweet is it? Uh, you're, you're back on campus, uh, you know, practicing, getting ready. A uh, Thursday game against Tennessee. Tennessee, uh, which uh, annihilated my bracket by beating Duke, who I thought might make the Final Four, uh, looked very vulnerable in their first game. Uh, they nearly lost, uh, as I recall. Um, what, what's what's the vibe uh, with the team? And, uh, you know, give us your thoughts about uh, facing uh, Tennessee. Well, vibe with the team, they're excited to play, excited to be here. And, and the, I think when you win as many games as these guys won consecutively, there, there's no moment or stage too big. And luckily, we were, we were able to play in a big arena in Columbus, which kind of got us, um, I guess, uh, somewhat prepared to play in the Garden. Obviously, there's there's nothing like the Garden. Yeah. Um, but as far as Tennessee, it, it, they played extremely well against Duke. They were determined. They challenged everything. They were physical. Obviously, they're playing for a Hall of Fame coach, and, and those guys are all very, very capable uh, of making threes and scoring on the interior. So they present a number of challenges, not to mention they probably have the best defense in, in the United States of America. So it's, it's going to be a task. Uh, how, how cool is it that you're going to Madison Square Garden for these games? Pretty cool. My last experience here, I was an assistant coach at Florida when Chioza hit the floater to beat Wisconsin, and then uh, South Carolina beat us to go to the Final Four. So uh, mixed emotions being back in the garden, but uh, there's nothing like it. It's, it. It is the big stage. All right. Outstanding job. Dusty May, I, I'm sure you're, you're in hot demand for interviews, and we couldn't appreciate any more than you took time to be with us here on the program. Congratulations. Uh, we'll be tuned in uh, against Tennessee and, and rooting for the Owls and uh, hope another incredible story can be written and that uh, we get a chance to talk to you again next week uh, as you go to the Final Four. That would be great. Love to. That's a great uh, Coach Schellenberger uh, impersonation as well. <laughs> <laughs> we go by way, way back with Schnelly, and uh, he was just a brilliant guy. And, uh, you know, one of the great promoters, though. I mean, uh, that was uh, at a time, too, where you, you pretty much had to promote your own sport. And uh, nobody was better uh, at it than Howard Schneller. Yeah. yeah, he was great. Yeah, all right. our, our football stadium, all that, is, is, it's impressive. Hey, thanks so much, Dusty. Well, really a pleasure. Fun. And thanks so much yeah. for sharing time with us. Appreciate it. Dusty May, uh, ladies and gentlemen.